I've always been fascinated by the expertise required to create the Japanese samurai sword. Being able to hammer, fold and weld multiple layers of steel while at the same time controlling their carbon content, that's pure genius. It was basically the samurai's way of demonstrating their elevated status in Japanese society. I've always seen it as an art form that's produced some incredible masterpieces from Japan. And I don't use that term masterpiece lightly. Now Grand Seiko is from Japan as well. This company's been knocking on the doors of the big players for many years. The Swiss, the Germans, the Brits, and even the French. Grand Seiko has not only knocked on the doors of the big watchmakers, they've actually knocked some of these doors completely off their hinges. Because I'm looking at this dial, and the subtlety, the attention to fine detail, and the emotive feel that it's giving off has taken the world by storm. Since 2010, when the original Snowflake was released, serious watch people have started to pay attention to Grand Seiko. Now the term masterpiece, I don't usually throw it around lightly. But whoever was responsible for designing and executing this dial has created a modern masterpiece. It's that good. I've handled so many watches over the years, and the last time I saw something with such intricacy and precision finishing, the price tag was somewhere around the 50 grand mark. So what I'm trying to say, if I'm trying to say anything, is this. Grand Seiko watches like this are an absolute bargain in today's horological world. Just on the execution and detailing alone. And we haven't even gotten to the movement yet. Many of us walk into an authorised dealer, we try on the latest and greatest on the wrist, just for size, just for fun. Maybe it's because we're watch nerds. It's all good. We don't need any excuses. We do those customary wrist shot photos, upload them to social media, and then we ask all of our friends for their feedback. But there's one thing in trying on a watch, and another thing actually living with one. One might say that the relationship with any watch truly begins when the money has been handed over. And you can now call that timepiece yours. I bought it. I own it. I actually let go of my Omega Aquaterra in order to buy this. Why? Well, I have a strict discipline in my watch mindset. For many who know me, I only have eight watches in my watch box at any one time. That's it. So if one has to come in, one has to depart. That's the rules that I play by. But I digress. Apart from the dial being a masterpiece, in more ways than the obvious I might add, this timepiece is also somewhat of a revelation. I'm more than happy to have a power reserve indicator on the rear of any watch a mechanical manual wind or an automatic watch. But with Grand Seiko's spring drive, I think whoever decided to place it front and centre knew exactly what they were doing. The philosophy and design language of these timepieces are drawn from nature itself, from the surrounding landscapes of the Grand Seiko studios in Japan. Mountains and lakes, a beautiful natural environment to find inspiration. Now I said that this spring drive and its power reserve is a revelation. Because when you wind a traditional mechanical or automatic watch, you affect the rate at which the watch functions, its speed, or in more formal terms, its accuracy. When the mainspring of a traditional mechanical watch winds down, so too does the accuracy change of that watch. It's like running out of breath. Even the watches with two barrels and COSC and meta certification, the speed does indeed change as the mainspring winds down. It's just simple physics. So when you wind a traditional mechanical watch, I liken it to giving it some more juice so it can run at its proper intended specified rate. And herein lies the huge difference with spring drive. Grand Seiko states an accuracy figure at a maximum deviation of plus or minus one second per day. And from what I've heard from many owners, it will by no means deviate from that figure even as the mainspring winds down. And that's what I've experienced with this watch. As long as there's the smallest ounce of tension in that mainspring, just the slightest amount of juice, that maximum deviation of plus or minus one second per day will remain exactly the same until that spring is fully depleted. This is pure genius. This is where it gets a little bit weird. You're not giving it more juice so it can come back up to speed and run at a healthy rate again. The spring drive is already running at a healthy rate. It's actually running perfectly even with only fumes left in the tank. That in itself is pure mastery. So by winding the crown on any Grand Seiko spring drive, you're simply enabling the magic to continue to do its thing, to impress you with its smooth sweep and absurd accuracy. But it gets even better, 
This particular model I have here is an automatic wind. And you know what, in all my excitement and intrigue, I forgot to actually introduce this watch. It's from Grand Seiko's Elegance Collection. It's called the Blue Sky Flag, SBGA 407. But again, I digress. So being an automatic, I can choose to wind it manually and replenish that power reserve, or alternatively, allow the movement of my wrist throughout the day to wind that mainspring. And this is what I do. When I've enjoyed the watch on my wrist for several days, I remove it and put it back in the watch box. I allow it to deplete itself to almost empty. In other words, I let it fully wind down for a few days. That way, when I open the watch box and grab this watch to cycle it in my weekly rotation, the first thing that I see is that seconds hand is exactly where it should be in accordance with the current day's time. This gives you the first buzz. There's less than a quarter day's power reserve left in the tank and this watch is still producing the most accurate rendition of time. I might add, in the smoothest, most elegant and simplest way I've ever seen. The second buzz comes from the wearing experience. Because throughout the day, you slowly see that power reserve indicator increase as your wrist moves. And this is where the watch really starts to talk to you on an entirely new level. You suddenly get the realisation that the only time you're ever going to need to use that crown again is to change that date on the odd month throughout the year. The start of March, then May, the beginning of July, October, and finally December. That's five times a year you need to manually adjust this 31-day date wheel in order to accommodate the Gregorian calendar. This fine Japanese crafted timepiece from Grand Sake is saying something. And if you're quiet in your mind and listen with your heart, you're going to hear this watch say these words. I'm reliable, precise, and an absolute delight to your eyes. Well, <laughs> that's what I hear anyway. I told you it might get a little bit weird. Now seeing the power reserve indicator in a new light, this has become Grand Seiko's signature feature on this dial, for me. Not only where I can enjoy its beauty and silent charm, but it also gives Grand Seiko an opportunity to showcase and demonstrate their use of delicate, intricate techniques. Processes that draw out details from the materials that they use. They could have easily slapped any standard run-of-the-mill power reserve indicator on this watch, but no. What they've done is actually create even more subtle light play and tonality on that already spectacular dial. To the naked eye, this dial, that handset, this power reserve indicator, they look amazing. But under close scrutiny from macro lenses, this is near perfect. It doesn't get much better than this. And if it does, it comes at a much, much higher premium. Honestly, you gotta love Japanese perfection. Art, nature, precision, and beauty all in one timepiece. Are there any faults? Can I fault this watch in any way? Are there any gripes? Are there any negatives? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, so maybe I'm bending the truth here. Of course there's gripes. Every single watch we own always has room for improvement. But as always, we manage to find a way to live with these shortfalls and justify them. That way, we remain in harmony and peace with our purchasing decisions. My take on this modern masterpiece from Grand Seiko. I love it. I own it. And the most difficult thing in acquiring this watch was actually letting go of my Omega. Maybe it's time to sell another watch from that 8 and dig deep into those empty pockets of mine to reacquire that watch. <laughs>